What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wes's Angling. You're joining me at High Haze today uh, on a cold November morning. I've already mixed up my ground bait and I've got my rods out as well. Behind us here, I've just put the Pentalite Broly Shelter up because it is really windy and I don't want the uh, camera picking up the wind interference while I'm just talking you through the uh, methods that I'm using today. So I'm just using some of this Dynamite Bait Swim Stim F1 Sweet Cool Water Ground Bait. And to that, I've just added a handful of two mils. Now, I didn't want to put too many two mils in at this time of year because I wanted to keep it quite low feed. Like I said, I've already got my rods out. So we're going to keep things interesting today and do a little bit of a bait challenge. I'm going to be using these 10 mil bandom sinkers, chocolate orange and washed out pink on one rod. And on the other rod, I'm going to be using a bait that I neglect quite a lot, which is pellets. I tend to fish wafters mostly because that's what I have the most confidence in. You settle into your own ways when you're fishing, I think, sometimes. But uh, a few of my subscribers have been doing really well on 8mm uh, Robin Reds and 8mm Halibut. With it coming into autumn now, the fish are probably sick of seeing these floral wafters and pop-ups and things like that. So it can be good to mix it up and I've, um, I've got a feeling I'll do quite well today off those. But to keep it a fair test, I'm going to mix up the colours, like I said, Robin Red and Halibut on one. And then the pink ones and the orange of the Bandom Sinkers on the other rod. And halfway through the day I'll swap the rods over so it's a fur test and you know it's not the swim that's producing the fish. Like I say, the rods are already out. I've got one uh, quite close into the margin down here on the right hand side. In autumn, never discount fishing in the margin. It can still be really, really effective. And my other one I've just put out. There is an aerator uh, up there to the right. I'm not fishing to that at the moment, but I definitely will at some point today. I'm just fishing this rod straight out. We came here a couple of weeks ago to High Haze and we had a really good uh, cage feeder session. If you haven't seen that, I will put the link up in the top right hand corner now. Um, so we wanted to try it again. But while we were fishing, there were so many bubbles coming up on this side of the lake. Uh, so we wanted to come back, give it a go on the method feeders. So hopefully we have quite a good session for you today. I'm hoping we catch a few. But well, fingers crossed, sit back, grab yourself a brew or a beer, whatever's your poison, and uh, enjoy the fishing. So, as you know, if you're following the channel, when I'm fishing method feeders like this on the bite alarms, I use my Grace Prodigy TX specimen rods, one and a quarter test curve, and pair them with my Shimano 6000 DL reels. I've got eight pound Daiwa sensor on these. Hopefully we manage to catch something today and uh, get the old Wes's angling fishing towel slimed up. What was that on, Dad? Big wafter. Half an hour now, so I think it's time for a recast and I'll show you the rig. Well, my halibut pellet's still on, so that's the main thing. Okay, so that's my method feeder. It's just a small Preston Innovations method feeder. These are my own pre-tied rigs and I've just got eight pound line there to a size 12 hook which goes perfectly with an 8mm bait and then I've just got a small bait band at the top I've got a banding tool which makes it easy to band the pellets on all I do, put the banding tool through the band obviously this is just for the beginners and then put my pellet in, pull it on and there you go, that pellet's secured in the band there and what I'll do is put a little bit of method mix in the mould push the hook and the bait into the mould put some more mix over the top and then squeeze my method feeder into the mould like that 
and get a perfect parcel of bait there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually double load that. So I'm just going to take some method mix, put it over the top and just gently, gently squeeze that on. So that will usually come off on the drop. That second part, which if there's any fish feeding in the upper layers, it'll draw them down. I think I'm going to pop this one over to the aerator this time. No wonder I didn't have a fish on this one. <laughs> That's the problem when it's so windy, it blows all these snags into the margins. So I'm going to keep on down the margin with this one. So it's away from the other line. Got my rod tips really close to the water because of the wind. I'm going to work my way closer to the aerator with every cast until we find the fish. Like I said, it is incredibly windy, so I'm really sorry if the uh, camera's picking up on the wind interference, and I hope it's not too annoying. So these have been in a while now, so I'm going to do a recast. Now the problem with fishing bottom baits here at High Haze is it's quite a silty bottom. So I think that's why wafters work quite well, because obviously they'll sit above the silt. Um, whereas these bottom baits might sink into it. Uh, conditions are great. It's just that it was a little bit cold last night. That's the only thing that might put the fish off. But I'm fairly confident still. I'm going to stick with these methods, even though I think wafters would probably work better here. Uh, I'm still going to stick with them. My dad's had a couple of fish on the pink wafters today. That's what he's fishing with. Fishing the same methods as me. So if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. I'll pop this one out over by that aerator. This other one, I'm just going to flick out. I'm not blind. I'm rubbing my back. Oh, it's windy. As soon as we have that bream on the rubbing red, we'll keep on with that. At least it saved the blank. Double load it again. And that one was just underarmed out. So that's one to the pellet. I'll recast this one. It's a better cast, just to the right of that aerator. Is this on a pink wafter again? On this side? So my dad's fishing with bread and pink wafter. He's had two fish on the bread now. Is this another tench on the bread? <laughs> so as soon as he swaps onto the bread, he's getting tench. So he's just using bread punch on the method feeder. 
that's his second tench. He's on one carp and that was on the pink wafter. And my pellets and sinkers are not doing very well. I've only had one bream. So he's just squeezing his bread feed around the banjo feeder. Just fishing the opposite side to me. Challenge, I'm going to swap over to pink wafters. Let's go for eight mils. That's true. Let's put a wafter on. And we'll see if we catch. <laughs> If we do catch it, it's going to speak for itself. <laughs> Never use anything but wafters. <laughs> All right. Nice little underarm. Sink my line. Surprised I've not had anything over to that aerator on the sinker. Let's see if this wafter makes a difference. I think this uh, ground bait will be a good contrast here because it's really dark and the bottom here is really silty and light. It's like a light brown colour. So I imagine it stands out. Let's get this back over to that aerator. Oh, I'm in a tree. It's the only problem with 12 foot rods when you're clumsy. Oh, it's windy. It's all right, I'll deal with that. There's only one other person fishing today on this lake and he's down the um, fishing pole probably for the eyed that are in here Let's give us a bit more slack Oh, we're in on the wafter Oh no, it's come off Bloody bream. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm counting that one. I saw it. <laughs> Within about four minutes of changing baits to the wafters. We're in on the wafters. I don't think it's massive, maybe a tench. Oh, that's a nice tench. Well, what does this tell you guys? All morning, fishing with the sinkers and the pellets, swap over to wafters, and I've had two fish in five minutes. It's crazy, isn't it? Look at how dark this tench is. It's a really nice colour. Put perfectly in the side of the mouth. Love a little tench.
Well, I haven't done a giveaway in a couple of weeks, so I thought I would on today's session for you, just as a thank you for watching the videos. So one lucky person is gonna be in for a chance of winning one of these lovely Wessie's Angling fishing towels. It's got a little hook on it there, so you can uh, hook it to your fishing bag or whatever. So I'll be giving one of those away. Not this one, because this is covered in bream slime. So <laughs> to be in with a chance of winning this video, all you need to do is pop a comment down below. You need to be subscribed to the channel and you need to share the video with somebody that's also into fishing. And what I'll do, when the video gets to 3,000 views, I'll pick somebody from the comments at random and I'll get one of these Westies Angling fishing towels sent out to you in the post. So I've just been talking to my dad and we think that the reason that the pellets and the bottom baits aren't working well here is because of the silty bottom. Because when you think about it, if my dad's using bread punch, and it also makes sense why we had a really good cage feeder session last week, because the cage feeder will sink in, and then you've got about a foot long hook length that's gonna lay on top of the silt. Whereas if you're fishing method feeders like this with bottom baits, the method feeder is gonna sink into the silt along with the bottom bait. Now, my dad's fishing the same way, but with a wafter and with the bread punch. But the bread punch is very light as well, so that's probably sat above the silt. So it does make sense. I'm gonna get my rods back out and uh, hopefully get a few more. But it, it does show you that, I think it definitely depends on the fishery that you're fishing at, you know, and what the bottom's like. So it might be worth uh, giving that a little bit more thought when you method feed a fishing. You know, what's the bottom like in the lake that you're fishing? Um, it's not hard to find out. You know, you can just get yourself a, a heavy lead and just feel down, feel the bottom. You know, if it's if it's a, if you get a solid bump, then you know that it's a hard bottom and you could probably fish a bottom bait. Whereas if you, you've got your lead and you feel it down and it's um, stodgy, and silty, then you know that you're going to have to fish a wafter or a lighter bait. Just a little tip. This will probably be a bream. Seems to be a bream coming from this side. Nice one though. Decent slab. Look at this. Three fish in 10 minutes after swapping to the wafters. Oh, look at this slab of a bream. Nice bream that for a commercial. Pink wafters for the win, always. <laughs> I didn't even got this one back out yet. Not quite far enough towards the rate of that, but I'll leave it. Is it another carp? It's a tench. Must be a decent one, it's putting a bit of a bend in that rod. It's one of those uh, Blue coloured ones, blue silver ones. It's fighting well for the size of it. Look at this wind blowing into us. Yeah. Nice tench that does. We're in. Not sure what this is, but it's uh it's definitely bumping around. I don't want it to get into these bushes here. Tension. <clears throat> oh, 
lovely autumn tench. Oh, hook's coming out of the net. It's okay. What a what a difference that change to uh, wafters has made. Okay, so I just had a fish on that left end rod, but I'm actually going to recast both out. That other one's been in a fair amount of time. So we'll check everything and recast. Keep getting drop backs today. Must be another tench. That's a bream this time. Oh, it's come off. Absolute nightmare for that bream, aren't they? Nice F1 that, isn't it? That's the biggest F1 I've ever got. I think, there. yeah, I think uh, it's a good five pound that. So you can tell it's an F1 because it's no barbules. It's got that lateral line of scales down in the middle. But, I mean, it's curved in the net there. But, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's not far off a six pound F1 that. that that's it, definitely. Even so maybe even bigger, yeah. Do you want to weigh it? No. Really nice. Starting to get like a humped back, isn't it? Yeah. What was that? Red. There are some decent F ones in here, aren't there? Yeah, I, I think I've had one of similar size, or maybe a touch bigger than that in winter. Sneaking one last fish in. It's like a bream. Yeah, it's a nice bream. Oh no, it's not, it's an eyed. Good mouth on it. Wow, look at the size of that eyed. Definitely. Look at this one. That is a proper eyed that dead. So you know it's an eye and not a roach. Black eye because of the black eyes and the size as well. I think. Look at that chunk of an eye. Okay, folks. So we're going to call it a day there and get packed up. Uh, it's been a decent day session considering the weather conditions. As you can see, they've been absolutely awful. Uh, there's a big storm from coming in now, so we wanted to get uh, packed up and out of the way before that comes through. I had hardly anything on the uh, the sinkers in the pellets. Since swapping over to the wafters, I've had a decent session. It just shows you that it helps to have a choice of baits when you go out method feeder fishing. Don't be scared of swapping the tactics up. Obviously, I wanted to do a little bit of a challenge today and uh, that method just wasn't working. So I swapped it up again. Uh, I wanted to get a few fish for you. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next Westies Angling.